just at Wharton's Lock now. Heck of an overflow happening. And it looks like the lock isn't in our favour looking at the water coming through those gates. So let's go and have a look. And as I thought, we've got to let the water out. That's it, lock set. I'm gonna go and get Chugs. Getting funny looks there from Nikki. I'm gonna go and get the boat. What she, she put she's sticking a sticking a tongue out and everything at me up there. She's been, she's been very rude. So I'll go and get the boat and we can go up the lock. Now with this by wash, this could be entertaining. I may have to put the camera down folks because the bywash is inevitably going to take chugs over so uh, we'll try and allow for it and uh, hopefully we'll be okay. The gate incidentally did have a little piece of wood wedged behind it so it wouldn't open all the way. I'm not making excuses, that is the truth, folks. So yeah, the bywash is just taking chugs a little bit. Let me just give it a little bit of welly, just to bring it round, and I think we're all right. Oh, look at that. Nelly, go on, go on, get over, that's it. Oh, done like a pro. Little bump. Once we're through this lock, we've only got about a hundred yards. Uh, we've noticed there's a couple of boats moored up there, but I'm sure there's a space at the back of them. So that's where we're heading for. And that'll do us hopefully for a couple of nights. And we're heading to pick up um, Nikki's boat, which is moored up, up that way. <laughs> we're looking to go and pick that up in the next few days. So uh, that'll be good and we can uh, get everything back on, uh, on her boat. And then uh, we're heading off to new climbs. Not too far, because we're meeting up with a couple of friends up there, so uh, yeah, it'll be nice. So here we are again, moored up in the shadow of Beeston Castle yet again. It's one of our favourite moorings. I've always loved it and it's the first place I sort of met Nicky. Sort of met. It's a long story. I'll explain one time. But we're moored up by a friend of mine as well, Mick. He's a trader. He makes his own spoons and wooden sculptures and stuff. Uh, him and his beautiful dog, Hope. Uh, so it's nice to have a little bit of a chat with him. So uh, yeah, we're moored up, all safe. So we're just going to scrub this side of the boat. Haven't been able to get to it for a bit. There's a bit of duck muck and uh, the windows are filthy. So I'm just going to get the scrubbing brush and just scrub this side a little bit. Uh, and then perhaps sit with Nikki on the back of the, on the back deck there, have a little drink and look at this lovely view because it is quite breathtaking and it's good to be here again. Hopefully, as I say, spend a couple of days here we are moored up on pins. If I'd have moored up a little bit further down that way, we'd have been on rings, which obviously with the strong winds coming in, train, with the strong winds coming in, it would have been safer. But the view isn't as good. This train's noisy. 
But the view isn't as good because we have had the, the trees in the way of the castle. So uh, that's just nice to, to sit out and or look through the window, even if it's raining, and look at that beautiful view. Right, uh, might do some filming over the next couple of days. We'll wait and see. But at least I can keep the vlogs coming now. We're both fighting fit. Uh, kiddies are fine. Animals are fine. So Chugs is good to go. Well, it's sunrise on Sunday, the 30th of January. We had a storm yesterday, quite a severe storm. I can't remember, it did have a name. Um, it was really, really windy yesterday. Uh, so we had a day on the boat. We did try to go out for a walk to get some fresh air, but the towpath got really muddy and we turned around and came back. Now it's early and we're heading towards uh, Barbridge. And we're going to moor up by the Barbridge pub. We've booked a table for half past two this afternoon. But we've got about five and a half, six hours cruise. Something like that. So we may be pushing it. But we're going to get away early this morning. We've got the locks to deal with. Um, and plus the fact there's a severe weather warning um, for three o'clock this afternoon. So we've got to be moored up by then. It's going to be really bad apparently. Uh, Storm Corrie. Well, there we go. So we want to be moored up before that. It's nice and calm and still now. So I'm going to get these ropes up, get the pins out, and we're going to get cracking. Um, yeah, <laughs> we, we've got to move. We, we're running out of water. I got in the shower last night and I heard the water tank ping. And uh, I checked the water level and it really, really is low. So we do have to move. So that's why we're going today. Otherwise, I'd have stayed here and just rode out the storm. But... Uh, yeah, we need water, we need the services. Let's get going. Well, we're on our way. I've just said goodbye to uh, Mick and uh, his lovely dog, Hope. I hate to leave this area. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely beautiful and we didn't want to leave. But we are getting through water rather quick at the moment, of course. At, at the moment, there's four of us on board. Uh, but we are heading up, and uh, Nikki's going to pick up her boat. Um, and then uh, we're going to take the two boats. So uh, we might save on water a little bit then. <laughs> we are getting through water rather quickly. But we need to shower, we need to wash, we need to cook. And that's what it is. So, uh, yeah. We'll be to Calvary. We'll get Calvary services. We'll get water and we'll be moored up safely for the storm. And I enough looking forward to that Sunday dinner at the Bar Bridge Inn. I really am. Yeah, just before I came out of the boat, I put some kindling on the fire and uh, a couple of little logs just to get it going again. So it's nice and warm for, for everybody on board, for the kiddies. Um, <laughs> and obviously, uh, Nikki has just put some coal on because it smokes like a good one. So I'm feeling like a herring here or a kipper, a smoke kipper. You see the smoke coming out of that chimney? <laughs> So she's obviously just put some coal on, so uh, yeah, I'm like an old steam train driver here. I'm getting it right in the face. Pardon me, boy, is that the Chattanooga choo-choo? <laughs> oh dear me. We did try and come for a walk up here yesterday in that wind, but look at the towpath. Uh, the dogs were getting covered so much so that uh, Nicky had to put Chip in the bowl to wash his little feet. His little white feet were black with the mud. So uh, yeah, we uh, we took the decision to turn around and come back to the boat. The dogs would have been covered in it. But oh, this is beautiful. What a beautiful morning for cruising.
So we're at the first lock of the day, Beeston Iron Lock. Nikki's just going up now to set the lock for me. Yeah, when this lock was built in the late 1700s, um, it had a stone wall. Uh, unfortunately though, with the high sand content in the soil here, it pushed it in and it allowed the walls in the lock to bow, even though it's a double lock made for wide beam boats or two narrow boats, uh, but the inside of the walls bowed at the bottom. So in 1828 they hired Thomas Telford to come and rectify it. So he put um, iron walls in the lock. Uh, it still didn't do the job. It did do the job originally and then they bowed and sagged again. So now there's recommendations all over the place there. There's big red signs warning just one narrowboat in at a time. Even though it looks like a wide beam uh, lock you can only get one boat in. Um, otherwise you'll find yourself in mid-air uh, when you let the water out. So it's not so bad going up, but uh, yeah, coming down, you could get stuck. And here inside the iron lock, you can see <laughs> the iron walls that uh, line here, but it is bowed, trust me, it is bowed, but the only fault is with this lock there's no ladders in it so if you're a single boater you can get your boat in but you can't get off your boat there's no ladders at all so it makes it very difficult for a solo boater luckily I am now crewed <laughs> and there on the gate you can actually see the paddle uh, when you wind the paddle up there you can see Nicky now is closing it and uh, that will close that little gate down. Can you see it going down? Such a simple idea but really effective. That's the first lock of the day done. Effortless. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got to beat that storm. It's hard to believe looking at it. The sun's trying to poke through the clouds. It's as calm as calm can be. Um, it is very cold, uh, but it's so calm. And this storm Cory or Corrie or whatever it's called is supposed to be a proper humdinger later. So yeah, we'll be moored up by then and having a Sunday lunch in the pub. <sighs> it's lovely. What a lovely thought. We're here at Beeston Stone Lock now. It's only a short hop from uh, Beeston Iron Lock. But these gates were open, and the gates were open at Beeston Iron Lock as well. So we don't know whether the storm yesterday has blown them open or we've had a very lazy boater in front of us. but. It appears none of these locks are going to be set for us. Hello, lovely lady. And the keen-eyed amongst you will notice that the roof of Chugs is looking a little bit shabby. Indeed, the stern is as well. Um, Chugs is a very light grey and all of the roof and the back deck here is painted in this anti-slip stuff. It's like a grit paint. Uh, it's got very su uh, fine silica sand in the paint, I believe. Um, it's very good, very practical, but unfortunately it stores the muck and I could scrub that roof all day and it won't come up any better than what it is now, or very little anyway. So what I'm planning on doing is getting a slightly darker grey and I'm going to repaint the roof in a slightly darker grey, it won't show the muck as much and get a good few layers on, including the stern deck here and that'll smarten chugs up a bit. I may do down the gunnels, 
uh, because the down the gunnels is a very light grey and it tends to show every mark when you catch the lock sometimes or whatever it shows every mark so I may do down the gunnels as well uh, it'll hide my mistakes <laughs> Well, that's Beeston Stone Lock done. So now uh, a little cruise up to my favourite lock, the most picturesque lock, in my opinion, on the network that I've done so far, Tilston Lock next, and then it's uh, Bunbury Staircase, and then we're free up to Barbridge, and that's going to be our mooring for the night. It's hard to believe, I've said earlier, it's so still out here, and both Nikki and I are saying that it's hard to believe that this Storm Corrie is coming in about three o'clock this afternoon. It's just so still and peaceful. It's beautiful this morning. So we're just coming up now to Tilston Lock. It is beautiful. I mean, look at that. Uh, it is my favourite lock. I love it. It's not a very friendly lock, to be fair. The gates leak like buggery, but um, yeah, it's just beautiful around here. I do like it. I have literally done hundreds of locks throughout the network, but up to now, Tilston Lock is my favourite. It's just beautiful. There's nothing you can't love about this place. can clearly see the leaky gates at the top and um, the gates behind me uh, at one time had a huge gap in them you could literally put your hand in the gap that was there uh, they put new mitres on now so at least that's been cured <laughs> 